Hi again. I've got quite a little uh, batch of things going on right here. I've got some inks, some rollers, some linoleum, some mounted linoleum. I've got a hand brayer, and I've got some jigs that I wanted to kind of talk to people about. Um, so I'm gonna break this up into several videos. I think we're gonna have to do one with about um, the block printing tools, and then we'll do one with print cutting, cutting, um, inking, layering, and transferring imagery. So I, I don't know, we're, we might break this up into three or four different shorter videos, um, but I'm gonna get started right here with um, just discussing the material first and different types of materials that you can use and the tools that you can use. So first off, uh, my, my students are doing a relief project right now. We're doing an exchange print and we're doing um, linoleum. Uh, there's lots of different types of relief printing that you can do. Um, I just happen to have a lot of linoleum. Wood cuts that you could do as well are very similar, but you might need a different type of tool for that, for cutting. So first let's just talk about different materials that you can cut into okay so everything about relief printing you're basically taking a surface a matrix and you're carving out linoleum or wood um, this is MDF and then wherever there's a raised area is gonna hold ink and so that ink when you run it through the press will um, the, we're gonna roll ink on the surface so the raised areas will, will be what's printed black and anything that you cut away is going to be the white okay unless you print with white ink on black paper but that's a whole different thing okay so i've got a few different types of linoleum here this is called battleship gray linoleum this is a really common type of linoleum um over the i prefer this over the golden linoleum because it seems like it doesn't chip as much um but this is just unmounted as you can see it's got burlap on the back uh, it's got a nice, smooth, consistent surface, carves really well. You can do curves in this really easily, and you don't really need any special tools or anything like that. So I think, let's see what I have here. So yeah, you can use one of these Blick Easy Cut tools or, um, um, who's the other brand there? Um, Speedball makes tools that are basically identical to this and you basically have a handle here and it holds your nibs you can have like three to five different types of nibs but these are the most common ones uh, so this is a small it's a fine v-shaped nib as you maybe can see there and this is good for your fine line work and you just twist this off and you can kind of pop it out like that and replace it with one that's this is called a u gouge so you can see it's a nice fat u gouge that you can remove a lot of material quickly with this or another medium sized v bit um v v gauge and so you know most of my work um you know you're switching them out um throughout the whole process you know you'll use them for different things but you you want to be careful you know maybe start with a a fine line and then uh, kind of work your way up to more open areas you don't want to remove too much of your of your linoleum too quickly because you know it's easy to kind of go in aggressive but then you can't really put um you know can't put the toothpaste back in the bottle so okay so then we've got this is another common carving tool these are just power grips and they're palm cutters as well so when you're cutting with these this is a palm grip you want to be careful that you're not going to cut yourself so we have a few different things that we can use to help with this let's see so these are just some, I forget what they're called. But um, some people use these to actually put ink on and then they'll roll their ink out on this. You know, if you're working at home and you don't have a big surface to, to work on. 
and you can also use them for carving. So you can put your your linoleum in here, and you, when you cut away from you, this doesn't move. So it's that that's really handy to have. Um, when you're carving with a tool like this, you want to be careful that you're carving away from yourself. I can't tell you how many times a semester people like accidentally cut themselves, and they can cut themselves pretty. Uh, pretty severely you know you can do a lot of damage with these little tools they're very sharp so you want to be very careful um, when I'm using one of these tools I kind of go in very carefully so let's see I'm gonna pop this in tighten that up and I actually just learned this little trick taking one of these um, plastic rubber pads for like kitchen stuff for that you put like for your silverware and things silverware drawers this works really well also it like really sticks and I, it's it's really good i think i prefer this because it still slides around on this and i don't know this just seems much better so this is kind of what i've been using lately but when you're cutting you really want to get in there really carefully i like to hold it kind of like this and then have a couple of fingers to help guide and then I use my other hand also to just kind of press in and make sure that I'm guiding the line where I want to. It's easy to kind of like accidentally just kind of go, go over and slip out, or if you kind of start to scoop up, you know, it, it'll lose traction and you can kind of go into areas that you don't necessarily want to. Another thing is you might want to take, you know, these do come with other bits as well. Some of them have like, a, a knife point like this if I'm doing really fine detailed work and I want to make sure that I'm not cutting into a specific area maybe I'll line you know I'll go through and use this to kind of create that outline and then when the the when I'm cutting like say these types of marks across it'll tend to not go into those sections so if I line this here then my cross cuts won't go into these areas that are more important you know so it's, it's easy to, to kind of mess that up. Um, this power grip tool, these are a little bit bigger. They're also a palm grip and you know, you can kind of go, I do the same thing. They're a little bit longer and you can kind of carve away from yourself like that. Um, I do on occasion, you know, if I'm getting kind of fatigued, if my hand is getting fatigued, sometimes I get cramps in my hands from doing this for too long. Um, you know, from holding this in certain ways, I don't know, something about this palm grip might be too long for me and it kind of fatigues my hand a little bit, but you know, I'd be doing this the same way. You want to be very careful with these. Uh, you can get other types of carving tools as well. These are great for linoleum, but they're not really good for anything else. Like they're, they're great for linoleum. They're, they're disposable. You know, you can just get replacement knit. Uh, tips for these really cheap um, you know you can probably sharpen these if you have a hone and um, s some some leather a strop leather strop and some jewelers uh, putty but you know these are really meant to just be disposable so so just get yourself some backup nips uh, this is MDF this is kind of something that I've been playing around with a little bit too and it's it's medium density fiberboard mdf now i've been using this for a little bit and kind of enjoying it this is a reductive print that i did uh, a while back but you know i wasn't really able to use my lino tools for this i did the majority of it with my power grip set another one another type of set that's pretty common uh what's the name of it um Flex cut. Flex cut has a pretty cheap, you know, introductory set that would work for this flex cut. And it comes with a hone, um, a way to sharpen these, you know, sharpening is, is kind of difficult. I, I still struggle with sharpening. So you can use this. Um, you can also use uh, Dremel tools and things like that, you know, so if you have a Dremel tool with spin bit, you can do some interesting stuff with this, but you should keep in mind that um, th there is um, some chemicals in here that you probably don't want to be inhaling. So if you're creating a lot of dust with MDF, then try, try not to inhale it. Okay. Uh, let's see another type of common material. 
this is a Mokulito print that I did a while back as well. I was just doing some testing with it. And this is on birch. So you can see the surface of birch is pretty nice. It's This is the rough side too, but it was still uh, very, very usable. And I would want to use uh, wood cutting tools as well for this. You can get a very basic set <coughs> of tools like these power grips, uh, the Japanese woodcut tools, you can get them for like 10 bucks for a basic set. You know, they're not the best, but they're still pretty good and, and they're similar to, to this style. So, you know, keep an eye out for those. Uh, McLean's.com is, uh, has some nice wood cutting tools. They do a lot of relief prints there. So I would probably recommend going to McLean's to get my carving tools. They've got a great selection. Uh, something like this you can get right on Dick Blick for, you know, eight bucks, something like that. Same with these. You can get this stuff right on Dick Blick. With McLean's, you're, get, you're getting more into woodworking, so you're going to be finding, like, maple, birch, you know, that different types of uh, carving wood on that. So, okay, so one thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is kind of the, the imagery um, well, first let's talk about, let's talk about the inks and that way we can kind of round out the, the tools, the materials and the inks that I'm using. And then we can kind of move on from there. Um, let's see the inks that I'm using. I just switched over to these Cranfield Caligo safe wash relief inks because of the pandemic. I wasn't sure if students were going to be able to print in the studio. So I got this because it's an oil based ink but it's also washable so you don't necessarily need to have like harsh solvents to be able to do your cleanup you can clean up with um with just uh windex <coughs> windex works good soap and water you don't really need anything uh crazy you could even clean up with i think vegetable oil and that works well now the, the downside of this is I can't really mix this with other inks that I might have. So if I have, um, let's see, if I have, this is a nice ink. This is probably what I prefer to use, uh, Gamblin oil colors. But of course, like I didn't want to have these for students because you'd have to s clean up with the solvent. But these are nice. These are um, oil based. These are traditional oil based. So you can mix them with things like linseed oil or plate reducing oil, um, you know, things like that. And, and they're interchangeable too. So I could probably mix this with an etching ink and it, I wouldn't really have a, much of a problem. And, you know, it works pretty well. So I can use these as well. But I don't want to mix them. I don't want to mix my Gamblin oil based inks with my Caligo oil-based things because it's a different type. I think Caligos are probably soy-based. Um, these Renaissance oil blocks, these are these are the same type of ink as the Gamblin, so you can mix these all together. Um, but one thing that you can't really do is the, the Speedball inks are very similar to the the washable Caligo inks. I think they're they're meant to do the same thing. I think you're meant to be able to clean these up with just soap and water. Um, but I wasn't really having much su success pulling prints by hand with these types of ink. I was having, um, it wasn't very dense. I wasn't getting the densities that I liked. So that's why I kind of switched. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing that you can use is etching inks. So we have a bunch of different types of etching inks over here. Gamblin, Hanco, um, Renaissance Graphic, Graphic Chemical, um, all these types of inks. You can mix down. You just want to thin them with some reducing plate oil. Uh, thin them out and you can use those. They work great. So, you know, that's another way to go. If you're on a budget and you don't want to have a different bunch of different types of inks, you could just work with that as well. Uh, the rollers, these are the rollers that we're going to use and you know, these are really basic rollers. I do have some select rollers for other things, but I'm just going to leave out a few of these. I think some have gone for 
a little bit of a walk recently. Um, but, you know, these are real basic. They do the job though. Sometimes, you know, if you buy a roller at a craft store, it might not be appropriate because, you know, the amount of ink that you have might be too much and you might be, you might lose some of those fine details in your, in your block print. So if this is really squishy, right? But these basic speedball brayers are, are good. Um, this is a hand brayer as well. We're gonna be printing on etching presses. I have these set up to different pressures, but if you're working at home, you can ink up your block, put your paper on your block, and just go over it with, with um, a hand brayer. Um, a hand baron, I'm sorry. This is a brayer, this is a baron, and it, it'll it work pretty well. I, I do struggle sometimes to pull a nice dense black though, and in that case, you might wanna be using the baron, kind of peek at your print, put it back down, baron more, and if that conti continues, maybe ink up a little bit more, gently pull up the paper, ink up a little bit more, and then barren and then you can kind of check all the corners and see see how it's working out for you um okay a couple more nuts and bolts here this is what what you would call a jig and this is for mo registering multiple blocks or even just one block um, i have these set up so that they're an inch gap so if i take my unmounted, this is for unmounted. If I take an unmounted piece of linoleum, I kind of stick it right in there as well as I can. Then I can take my paper and put it down and that'll give me a one inch margin around. Now this is five by seven. So if I want inch all the way around, I'm gonna do uh, seven by nine. Now I might wanna have a nice sharp edge on my paper if I'm doing multiple blocks because you know I'm gonna want to have that registration once I put this in here I want that paper to go in there snug and if I have a deckled edge on my paper like this then I'm not gonna be able to register that very accurately I'm gonna have some issues with it so that's something that you want to keep in mind but this is just meant to make things a little bit easier for registration I also have so I've got a couple of these and I have a couple of these smaller ones as well, same thing. So this is meant for a one inch border all the way around, but you can see how nice and snug that is in there. I really tried to take some time to, to make these accurate. So this, the height of this is slightly higher than the height of this where the, the paper meets. Same with this, right? So it works really great. Now you can do register multiple blocks really easily and you'll see that during the printing. And it's also good for reductive prints. So we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, before we start though, t I just wanted to show you this. Uh, I've got a typical 22 by 30 sheet of paper. Um, I need my paper to be cut down to seven by nine. And so I'm able to get three rows that are seven inch and then I'll be able to get uh, three rows that are nine inch this way. So I should end up with nine pieces of paper per sheet that I'm using here. And typically I want to use my tear bar, you know, measure it out. Uh, a lot of people, when they measure, I keep seeing people like drawing a whole line in graphite. Don't do that. Just make a little tiny mark right there, right there, right there, 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 there. And then use a tear bar and just tear, right? Um, I want to have nice sharp, registration marks because I'm doing four layers. So I'm gonna cut using a utility knife. And this thing is duller than dull. But let's see if we can get it to work here. Travel on me a little bit, even if it's a little bit off. That's okay. I can live with that. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm gonna keep cutting this and then we're gonna start doing some printing. So I'll, I'll break this up into, I think, three parts. We'll see, okay, I'll be back.